Who do you want to talk about, Bryony? Um, what do you Whales. <laughs> whales. <laughs> the animals, Let's not the country. saying that you love whales. <laughs> yeah. And for anyone that doesn't know, we bonded over whale videos last night. <laughs> and your first TikTok video, which was oh, yeah. fucking hilarious. I feel like we need to cut that out. <laughs> It's like a that was so yeah, good. That's real briny. Yeah, that was my beard. <laughs> it is important that though, isn't it? Like it is important to just be like to have another side to it. To be like, I want to wind down and just watch whales. Whatever it is, whether it's was it Jake Jake was cat videos, wasn't he? Yeah, Jake likes a cat video. Jake loves a cat video. I like, I like a, a cat video. video too, to be fair. They're funny. Yeah. yeah. I'm quite excited for him because it's quite a just before we get started with the podcast. Like it's it's a big jump moving self-employed and he's obviously like really into it yeah you don't have like a black magic 6k pro if you're not into it right video is so important as well yeah as we found how important video is oh yeah for sure i think yeah more it just gets more and more doesn't it as well like mm. now everybody mm -hmm. wants vi uh, video more than photography yeah and how high quality is all the video stuff online yeah. Like even like reels and stuff, they're all shot Everybody's like Everybody's really properly like up in the game, aren't they? I was going to say up in yeah. the game big time. Yeah. You, him, you can get him to just go. I know. Well, that's like everyone always says, oh, does Jake shoot your videos? I'm like, no, I do them all Not myself, yet. actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> myself. I'm talented too. <laughs> but more just like, because he's been working, mm -hmm. it's not, he can't come here uh -huh. in the day when I need to do the video. So I've just kind of yeah. had to do you it. Do you just shoot all yours on your, on your phone? Bit. Do you? Yeah. And then straight upload. Like I edit in an app and, yeah, and I, I do spend a long time editing everything together and faffing with it all. The other job of being a creative. It's a whole other job, isn't it? Well, it's so many jobs. Yeah. Let's talk about all the jobs. <laughs> Let's not. Yeah, there's what we can talk about, all the jobs. We'll start at eight, It's too accounting. close to Christmas, I just cry. <laughs> <laughs> talk about Christmas and you've only got up until Christmas and then you're away, aren't you? Away forever. Let's not start the podcast with Brian yeah, actually so this jacking is, it in. Yeah, this is my goodbye exit interview. Well, that would be a terrible podcast, wouldn't it? This is <laughs> this is my close of business. Yeah, that'll be so good though. That'll yeah, be it'll. so so good for you. I'm excited for a break. Yeah, why now? Like, why are you doing it now? Um. It's like the only thing I ever asked you last night when I asked you every single location and where you're eating and where you're... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what restaurant are you going to? Yeah. Why are we going travelling now? Yeah. Um, well, it was never really the plan. Over summer, we were just looking for a week's holiday and then um, we just found, like, we found that we could get flights with our Amex points. Oh, okay. So found a really good deal to go to Japan. And then we were like, right, well, if we're going to Japan, then we could go to... The next place and the next place and mm. obviously then you're closer, aren't you? And the flights get cheaper. So then we're like, right, well, let's just do three months. We've got the time to do it. I can, I feel, well, January, I always feel like I can have a bit of a break anyway. Right. It's always just quietens down in January. Yeah. Um, I hate January. So it's nice to just go away. Um, I forget it, it exists, January. Just yeah. <laughs> And I think I always just burn out anyway. So yeah. it's nice to have a break. I'm terrified of it. We've not got... A, so I've always wanted to travel since being 16. If you'd have asked me what I wanted to do, I was like, I just want to go travelling. But then you go to uni and then you've got no money. And then instantly I wanted to start a business and then you've got no money. Mm -hmm. Then you've really got no money. <laughs> yeah. um, and you feel like all oh, your time needs to be put into that. So it's hard to take the break. Um, and then when you start to build momentum, it's hard to take the break. I had a dog, yeah. couldn't travel. Well, could have traveled, but didn't want to leave her. Um, and had her from being 18. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think now is the point. And like at the moment, we've not got any responsibilities and we've not got a mortgage and we've not got children. And mm. Just seems the right time. Yeah, and yeah. Jake was in a position that he felt ready to hand his notice in, so. Obviously, otherwise we couldn't have done it if he, like, if he had a nine till five, and we'd yeah. already used up his, all of his holidays this year anyway. Right. Um, so yeah, just yeah, because you've done like South Africa as well, and oh yeah, this year we've been you, so I think you properly like <laughs> use up all of Jake's holidays. Yeah. Don't you? As a, as a yeah. couple, you'd maximise that. Yeah. Um, but 
since losing Millie, my dog, um, like we were just like, right, well, let's just get the, the travel in that. So we went to Canada, Thailand, South Africa last year um, and just loved it. Yeah. Love the, the break, but going for two weeks or three weeks, it takes you a week to switch off. Yeah. A week to get over, like, because you're so busy up until going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you know how busy you're going to be as soon as you get back. So you don't actually switch, switch off, off properly. So I'm excited to, like, finally feel like I can switch off a little bit, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I I yeah, I know we talked about it earlier. It's like, do you just go and book a bunch of courses and do stuff while you're out there? Or do you just enjoy it? Yeah. Just enjoy the... Enjoy this stuff. one. Because yeah. now that we know, obviously, with, with Jake going self-employed, we know that it's a possibility to be able to do it again, but as more of a work... Yeah, right, trick. okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so it's not like... Like, loads of people always say, oh, do it now, it's once in a lifetime. We're like, why does it have to be once in a lifetime? Yeah, true. Because <laughs> we can tie it in with working, mm -hmm. and I'd love to be able to do that, like, combine those two loves. Um, but we need to do it now before, because we do want a family, and yeah. we want more responsibilities, but at yeah. the moment, while we can, yeah. do it. Might as well. Yeah, Absolutely. I think one of the, I mean, although we spent very little time in each part of the States, travelling through the States means that if we go back, yeah. we know where to spend time. Yeah. I always feel like, especially when you travel as well, you go somewhere and you're like, was this the best use of my time off? Yeah. Not so much, was this the best use of the money? Like, was this the best use of my very small amount of time off? Which we never really take time off. No. So you just end up turning it into like a work trip. So you don't have yeah. that responsibility of, oh, did I do the right thing? Did I book the right place? But you wouldn't know if you didn't do it either. Ah, exactly. Oh, this is, this is... That's the other thing. And, and then think... you can always go back if you yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, or, go or you go somewhere yeah. and you think, oh, I wish I had longer here. Yeah. But yeah, if like you back. two have the same like thing of, oh, well, you can, if you want to go, you can just sort of... Make it happen. Go, can't you? Yeah. Which is so good. Aye. How long have you been doing this now that you're now at the point where you're like, I'm going to take a little bit of time? Because it is only a little bit of time. Like, yes, it's three yeah. months, but it's a little bit of time. Yeah. By comparison. Yeah. You've been doing this what seven, seven years? Seven years since I did my first workshop. Eight. What did we say it was since we graduated? Eight years. Yeah. Eight years. Eight years yeah. Since graduating. Seven years since I did the first workshop, and I'd say that's when it all kind of started properly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, time for a little sabbatical. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. And you you graduated. It was like a overall textiles wood. Work. Like it, was, it was like a craft based Yeah, so it was called wood. Design Crafts. Right. And the main ones were glass, ceramic, textiles, metal. But then you, like, in the first year, you went around all the workshops. So kind of crossed over with the product design workshops. So you yeah. did the woodworking, like, went in the plastic yeah. shop, like, all different things. And then you kind of chose the one that you wanted to specialise in. So you must have had good workshops. Like, real, oh, yeah, the facilities were amazing. Where was it? At DeMontfort in Leicester. Okay. Uh -huh. So I did that one because I wanted to have a go at glass blowing. It was basically really? why that's I chose how, that's that how one. Cool craft. Yeah. It? And then realised I was far too clumsy and burnt myself constantly. <laughs> <Did> you? <laughs> yeah. Um, so you could have been a glass blower, but you were just clumsy. Yeah, pretty, yeah, could have been, but I was, no. It's so hard. The people who are good at it are so good. Like, they make it look so easy. But even to just, like, blow that first bubble, and then, like, pass out because you're like... <laughs> <laughs> That's um, so good. But, no, it was... It was I, I didn't make the most of the facilities and everything there. Like... Oh, you see that, but you're doing this now. No, but, I mean, like, first year, when you've got access to all of oh, right, that... Oh, yeah. You're like, but actually, you I just... Could, but, mm. In freshers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um... And uni wasn't like my favourite time, so I don't, I didn't. If I went back now, it'd be maybe different. But at the same time, yeah, I got the skills and stuff that I needed to begin yeah. with. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, everything I do now is not anything I learned at uni. So then you think, oh, did I really need that massive debt? <laughs> yeah. No. But yeah. It's an experience, isn't it? Yeah, like, and that's what the, I like took the, from uni. yeah, the creative people and stuff that you meet there is amazing. Was that the first time you really had your... No, your your mum was an art teacher, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. So had art been like through your life the whole time? Oh, yeah. Like, 
my, so my mum was an art teacher and my dad was a PE teacher oh, at okay. the same school. So our, like, in half term... have stories about that, right? Art teachers <laughs> and PE teachers getting together. <laughs> Don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, in half term or in the summer holidays, they had keys for the school, so we'd go in and we'd like oh, really? be able to go in the ceramics room so my mum would cool. be able to do stuff like that and then we'd go into I don't know if they're supposed to say this this might be a, like they might not have been allowed in of the reti- of the retired <laughs> they've now. left now it's oh, fine, it's fine. We're, so we'd go in and my out. dad would get all like the gymnastic mats out and then we'd get all like the basketball net, like go have some it was so fun work, right? um but yeah growing up like creativity and art and everything was such a huge huge part of it I, like I've got a book from when I was younger with like still life paintings in from when really? I was like six. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, and do you remember like on Art Attack when... Oh my goodness, I love that They book. did like the big Art Attack at the end. Yeah. And then there was one where he made like a scene of people using all like just clothes. Mm-hmm. So I did that in the living room, like got all my clothes and laid them all out as like people. And then there was oh, yeah. another one where he got loads of salt and he covered the whole room in the salt and like drew a pattern and I was like yeah. mom I need loads of salt <laughs> she was like nope yeah. <laughs> I, drew all the I ain't tidying that up <laughs> um, so yeah just always encouraged to be creative not even encouraged just loved it You're like just surrounded yeah. by Christmas presents I wanted art materials everything was like that was my hobby and what I was most into yeah that's amazing eh and now it's what you do full time yeah. And did Never you always know this, this is what it had to be full time? I mean, I know you just said that you no. didn't expect it. Didn't even know it was a possibility. Possible. Like, I don't think you get taught in school that you can run a business doing something that you actually mm. want to do. You don't, like, nobody tells you that you can do that. I, think. I don't know why. Like, no. It just, to me, it doesn't make sense. I think, you know, it should be something that you should be told about. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Or even, like, in college or. I don't know, I think even like leaving uni, at that point I suppose it was a bit more like you can either set a business up doing it or you go on and you do a master's to train to be a teacher or something else. Yeah. You don't really leave with a qualification to do a different job, do you know what I mean? Like mm. it's a bit of a funny one. But no, I didn't think, I never thought I'd be able to do it full time. And I think as soon as I left uni, I kind of knew that I wanted to be self-employed. Right. At that point, my mum had gone self-employed. So I saw her running a creative business for herself because she left teaching. Um, so I guess that's kind of when I realised it was a possibility and she was making it work. And I did a little bit with her to begin with. Um, you must have seen a huge shift in her day-to-day life from... Yeah. Like, mm. I always remember teachers at school being like, it's not just the time at school. And we know teachers and... The time marking after, like it's all encompassing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was slightly different for that. My dad, well, because he was PE, yeah. so like didn't really do any marking. Um, but he was like head of year and stuff, so he did have extra work yeah. to do. And but then it was also nice because they were always around for the holidays. Mm, that's true. So that was like the perk of it is that they were always there, at, like half term and. Yeah, stuff, but which is probably why a lot of people go into teaching because you get yeah, really holidays. good holidays. But then teachers get annoyed when you say that because they spend the, all the holidays working. And like my sister's teacher, and when people say that to her, she's like, "I've been in every day decorating my classroom." And oh, really? <laughs> right? Okay, yeah, so there's yeah. still a lot that yeah. goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. But no, it's it's nice to be able to finally be in this position to yeah. to do it full time. It's a big leap to start off though, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But then, I'm not particularly, I'm not risk averse, but I think I just got to a point where I was like, right, we'll try it. And then my thing, my thing I always say to myself is what is the worst that can happen? Mm. And if you can cope with that worst scenario, then might as well try it. Yeah. Because I couldn't, I couldn't imagine working in an office job or... No. Like <laughs> the freedom a business gives you is just so worth it. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. to just do what you want to do. Yeah, and there is times where you feel like you've not got as much freedom because you have to work so hard to get to the point where you can have that bit more freedom. Yeah. Um. So I think the last couple of years I've started to kind of get the rewards of it a little bit more, but 
It's been a seven year journey, though, yeah. isn't it, to get that? Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, yeah, there's been... I've always been able to kind of do what I want more on a day-to-day -day basis, no, not have yeah, telling, yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> and I set my own, it's, if I've got loads of work on, it's because I've given myself a lot of work or taken on a lot of work. Yeah. It's not somebody else telling me where I need to be at a certain time or this it's is what you need to, to do. Yeah. You've just <laughs> I can't say Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this terrible boss. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who is also me. Um, but that, like, we talk about this a lot with friends who work, who are thinking about working for themselves, or who do work for, or who work a normal job and look at, and they're like, oh well, you can, you know, do whatever at any time. Like, yeah, but you work two, three times the hours. Yeah. You work way more. Like your head's always going. Yeah, and even when you're not working, you're still in your brain. It's still it's going still through everything. Over. Like, yeah. you oh, did don't I do switch this? off. Did I do that? Like, yeah. did I answer that email? Did I send that? That parcel? Yeah. 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 <laughs> How has it changed between when you started and now, though? Because seven years. So oh. we spoke to, like, Joe yesterday, who's been on, like, a wild journey in a year. And we speak to some people that have been doing it for, like, Paul Hamler, like, 40 years. I think he's mm -hmm. the longest standing. He holds a record. Mm -hmm. But, like, seven years, you're still in this strange, like, you're still really new to it. Mm -hmm. But you are also been doing it a good bit of time. How has it changed over that seven years? quite a lot like when I so when I first started I was doing I started with the workshops but at that time I did have a part-time job in a gallery as well and the workshops I was maybe doing one or two a month like it wasn't a full-time like I've not been full-time for seven years yeah right um and I was just doing the workshops and I did the odd craft fair but with ceramics and some printmaking um, didn't do anything online, so didn't have a website or anything like that. So it was just mainly the workshops was my income. Um, and then COVID hit, and then that's kind of when it all changed and got me to this point, really. So when COVID happened, when they were like, right, people can't mix, you can't leave your house, whatever. But then you didn't really know the time scale, did you? So no, you don't yeah. know how long. They said just for the next two weeks or whatever, everything's cancelled. So I had to cancel those workshops. And then it was a bit like, oh, well. So I did, I remember doing a video and I never did talking stories, but I did a talking story like, right, well, everything's cancelled, but I'll keep you updated. And in the next couple of weeks, if you're feeling, or like in, for the next workshops, if you're feeling a bit poorly, then don't come and I'll send you your money back or whatever. Yeah, right. And then there was another video was, that was like, right, all workshops are cancelled, but I'll send you a kit because I had all the stuff. So mm, okay. I'd already bought all the materials and everything. So I, then I thought everybody is going to want something to do. Yeah. Um, so I gave people the option of their money back or a refund or because I didn't know when people could reschedule. Yeah. Before. Um, so then started to send kits to those people. And I, then I said, right, I have got Actually, before all of this, I sat on the end of the bed and I cried because I was like, this is it. Like, I've got no work. Because mm. it was so open-ended, right? It was, it was just like workshops. you had no idea. Yeah. And then they said there was like a thing of it's going to be at least six weeks. So sorry to rewind there. At that point, you had no sellable product, no. did you? It was all Bryony and the people in the workshop. Yeah. That was your so only... All, I was working. I'd just, I'd just come back from down south, just moved back in with my mum. Um, so yeah, I was going out to do workshops from there and at that point I'd built my workshops up to be, I was doing a few a month so yeah. I'd, and I'd worked so hard whilst I was living down south to keep my workshop business running here mm -hmm. in Lancashire. Um, I had a few venues going so I moved back to try and focus on that and then it was like, nope. <laughs> cancelled. Yeah, all cancelled. So at that point it was like, right, well, that's the end of that. I'm going to have to try and find some form of employment yep um and then so that was it was pretty that's horrible. hard yeah yeah like i can't even tough. Like, yeah um and at that point like i had many times in the past to just try and slow my brain down and to kind of work through it all i just started making mosaics and like making bigger panels which i'd not really done before because i had all of the stuff and i'd yeah, ordered all well the stuff for workshops it, yeah and then I was sitting making something like, so I'd set myself up in the conserv in my mum's conservatory. 
And I was like, you know, everybody else is going to need this. Everybody else is going to need something to You're doing this for do. you. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of, yeah. not a lot of you, but a lot of people in your position right yeah. now. So, and craft is something that helps so many people's mm -hmm. mental health and helps people, like the mindfulness aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Especially mosaic, I've found is the most mindfulness thing that I've ever tried. Um, so th at that point, that's when I said to people, look, I've got the stuff if you want a kit. I've got literally a shed full of materials from, because I've just collected stuff over the past God knows how many years. So I literally had a shed full of different papers and all different craft supplies. So I was like, if you want me to put a pack together that you can do with your children, then let me know. I'll pack your st stuff up. And then I just drove stuff around and I dropped things off at people's houses. Um, and at that point, like, it's very entrepreneurial. Isn't it? I was going to say, but I wasn't exactly even that. doing it as like. No, I know, but like it, it is. Yeah, it, no. you know. But it was more of a. Well, I've got this stuff, and and it was to begin with. It was the people. So at that point, my Facebook was small-ish. My following and Instagram was small, but I did quite a lot of Facebook, and it was people who'd been to workshops before who saw those posts who mm. were like, "Oh yeah, well, that's a really good idea." And then, mm. um, I started to order more things in, so I got. I bought things like tote bags and felt like fabric pens so that children could decorate their own bags and stuff at home. Yeah, right. You know, it's so weird. I'd completely forgotten about all this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so I had all the stuff for the kits. So I started to say, if you want a kit, then and then I started to get orders and I was like writing them down on post-it notes, packing them, and then I'd go and deliver them because they were all local. Mm -hmm. Um And then more and more people wanted them. So then people were telling their friends that that's what they'd done. And then... Friends More of friends wanted a kit. Thing, yeah. And then it started to get to the point where I needed to post them. So then there was just like post-it notes everywhere. It was utter chaos. And then I started to release a different kit each week. So people, even if they'd done one, they could do another project. You released a different kit every week? Pretty much. So we did like... I don't even know. We did like elephants, giraffes, teapots. Yeah. I, had, I started just having different that things. That's a monstrous amount of work. Yeah, but at this point, it, I wasn't packing tons because... Yeah, but just it was the design of, of the kits and to do one of it, like, that's a lot. Yeah. What was, uh, was it like a paint-by-number? Are your kits no, like a paint-by-numbers no. kind of, no. but with mosaic, no? No, so it's just like the board, a pack of tiles, some general instructions. It's not instructions on how to make it, because once you know the general thing, you can kind of just apply that to whatever it is that you're making. Right. So it's not like there was tons of extra work okay. per... Um, but it just give, gave people a I different guess. thing to do. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, then I just, I've never been busier than what I was then through COVID. It just got sort of bigger and bigger. The post-it note system wasn't working anymore. Yeah, it's just too much. So at that point, Jake moved into, when he was allowed, he moved into my mum's with me and built me right. a website. Um and so then, you were doing all of this just through DMs and Facebook Yeah, before. and post-it notes. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> that sounds my head into just like <sighs> migraines. Yeah, but oh, at the same time, it? there was there wasn't, oh yeah, but that, no the, spreadsheets. The, the point in that is that's what you had, so you just made it work. That's so good. Yeah. Um, and then every week I'd do like a weekly run to the post office. But they um, were fun. All the boxes. Yeah, everyone looked at me like, oh God. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and then, yeah, so built the website, launched the website, which was mad. Like, we had a little party in the garden for nice. launching the, the <laughs> website. It. Yeah. yeah. Like, launched it, and then you just sit there, don't you? Like, waiting yeah. for the first one. I've got one. a website now, where's the order? <laughs> Come <Yeah. on>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it just, yeah, started to get orders through that, which was amazing. And I worked every single day pretty much through COVID, through those first few months when you weren't allowed to leave the house, from going from what's Tesco got to offer, like what job can I get? Literally, I've got nothing to do, to then being so busy and also starting to really make my own work as well a bit more. Yeah. Um, so like in the day I'd pack kits and then on the evening I'd make stuff myself. Right. Um, and then do my hourly walk with Millie. <laughs> and that was kind of it. That was my, my days. 
Um, and then this place, my studio landlords now sent me a message to say, because of COVID, someone's leaving. We know it's bad timing, but would you be interested in having a studio again here? Because I had one here three years previous okay. to that, just as a pop-up for six weeks. But I said, if anything ever comes up again or anything right. bigger comes up, let me know. And that was a pop-up for one of the courses you were doing at the time? No, so I had like a little shop. Right, okay. Um, which was a bit of a mismatch of ceramics, prints, mosaics. And then it had a little room upstairs where I ran workshops, but only for like five people at right. a time. Um, so that kind of gave me the thing of, yeah, I want a space again. But cool. then I left it to go down south. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just said, if anything ever comes up again, let me know. And then through COVID and everyone was like, no, this is not good timing. To take on a workshop space when I wasn't even allowed to run workshops. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to <clears> open. <throat> um, but I was like, no, I'm going to do it. What's the worst that can happen? Right. Yeah. Um, and I need to get out of being at home because at that point you couldn't see the floor for boxes. Yeah, you need to. I was going yeah. mad trying to work at home every day. That is not. Yeah. Me. Um, so yeah, took this on, <laughs> and that was Brilliant. July, twenty twenty. Opened in August, just as a shop, with all the stuff that. So because of COVID, I'd managed to make quite a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, been here since. There's a real powerful story of entrepreneurship and just resilience there, isn't there? No, yeah, for sure. Like, just what what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. What's the options I've got? Yeah. Because nobody, it's not like you could have went and got a job. Nobody was taking anyone on. But there was just no. there, was, there was just nothing. No, and then, to be fair, when I took this on, which I didn't expect, was that we got grants, like the business grants and stuff, yeah. to, to help anyway. So it ended up being the best thing I could have possibly done. But then, obviously... I opened, and then t- two months later, we got closed again mm. for a month. And then... Was that the sort of second So then in November, yeah. we got closed for the whole of November. But then I was coming in in my pyjamas. Like, no one else was here. <laughs> that was the best I had, thing ever. I had a table for... I got my sewing machine on one table. I had a table for all of the ceramic stuff. I had a table for all the mosaic stuff. And I just potted about in here. And obviously, it was really stressful and... But that's again the world's how it's collapsing I, around you, and you're like, I'm in my PJs going to like, going to my little studio. <laughs> <laughs> just how I got, how I've always just got through stuff like that is actually just cracking on. Yeah, well, just like creative things has yeah. always mm. helped me so much with my own mental health, which is why then I think now I want to pass that on a little through bit with workshops. workshops and kits. Yeah. yeah. So with the did you start doing the workshops in the ceramics or was it just like artist-based workshops? Always done, mosaic. It was always, yeah. the workshops have always been mosaic, yeah. but you've obviously done your own ceramics, you've done your yeah. own bits of sewing and bits and bobs yeah. as well. Right. No, always mosaic for workshops. I've done some workshops more recently where people have come for the full weekend and we've got the pottery wheel out and we've done some ceramics as well. So it's been like a full craft weekend, but the workshops have always been mosaic. Right. Yeah. Why that? Because it's something that people... So I knew when I decided to go self-employed, I kind of knew I wanted to do adult workshops. Right. Um, and mosaic was something that people could... And I taught myself a year before, literally just... My mum had done some, so had some of the stuff. So I just, once I'd left uni and had nothing else to do, mm-hmm. just started faffing with different tiles and things. Um and then, because I knew I wanted to do the workshops, it's just something that people can make in an evening and take away. Yeah. Whereas ceramics, mm. you've got to come back every week because you've got to throw it one week, then come back and turn it, then come back and glaze it. Like it's, it's such a long that, process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas with the mosaic, I can take my stuff and I could go to cafes or all different venues, take the stuff either for two hours, four hours, six hours, but then... By the end of the day, people took something home. That's really fulfilling to have that. Yeah. But I made that. Yeah, and it's yeah. just one night out for people. And people, like, you can have, like I did somewhere, people got the, like a bit of a meal or a buffet and stuff with it, or they got a drink. And it was just so chilled. It was just, and it was something as well that people don't need a lot of one-to-one. Whereas if you were teaching, like, ceramics and throwing especially, you'd need 
to do one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Whereas Mosaic, I could do a bigger group at once. And then it, there was a really nice buzz in the room and people got to know people. Yeah. Um, and I've, I just found that it was so mindful, the whole process start to finish. And that is one of the main like things of feedback that I get now is how therapeutic it is as a craft. Yeah. So I think it just works perfectly for yeah. the workshops, really. And that's what you were looking for, wasn't it? You were yeah. looking for like a mindful craft, yeah. something you could just slow your head down and yeah. enjoy. Yeah. It's it's quite interesting because most people do product first, get really well known for their product and then do workshop. workshop. But it's kind of in the other area. And you've just done it totally the opposite way around. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Does any of that come from your mum and dad being teachers? So I, when I was younger, I always thought I'd end up being a teacher. Right. But, well, a primary school teacher. That was always kind of... Like, I've always worked in schools. So when I was 18, 17 and 18, I worked in a school. I was, like, the play worker for the after-school club and breakfast club. Right. But it organised all the craft activities. Then when I lived in Norfolk, I worked in a private school as the art teacher for just a maternity cover. Right. So I did that a little bit. Um, you just have that skill to teach then? I don't, I don't know, because I feel like five-year-olds are quite different to 50-year-olds. <laughs> um, well, 50-year-olds are easier than five-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. um, but I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I found, to begin with, I found it so nerve-wracking, because to stand in front of a room of people, like five-year-olds like five is easier in that respect. Mm. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I decided to do workshops before, like actually establishing my own work. But I think that's just what I knew I wanted to my business to be was to sort of pass that on a little bit. But I think your own and work to, is workshops, isn't it? Like your yeah, own work. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. People like you say, like establishing your own work, and we all think that you need to have this great product line. But actually, your work is the although the art's the product of it, like your work is the, the yeah. getting together, the fun, the mindfulness, the enjoyment of yeah, the, the, full the doing of it. Yeah. yeah, 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 your product's the whole thing. Yeah, and the same with the kits, really. That's about the experience of making something. Because I like with my workshops, I always say, you're not going to leave knowing absolutely everything there is to know about Mosaic. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I'm self-taught. I still don't always feel I'm in a position to teach it. But it's about the whole experience. I don't even care what you make at the end, as long as you have a nice time yeah. and <clears throat> enjoy the experience and the process of making it. Being quite Then present, it doesn't actually yeah. matter mm -hmm. what you make. Most, like, everybody makes something amazing. Like, yeah. literally everybody makes something amazing. And everyone's so proud of what they've made. But it's when people say, oh, I really needed that. Mm -hmm. Then you're like, that's my job done well then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that nothing makes me happier than getting a message, like someone messaged me on Friday after the workshop to just say, that's exactly what I needed, I'm having the worst year of my whole life and I'm really struggling and that's really just helped me start to put myself back together. I was like, well, literally I couldn't ask for anything else. Yeah, do you get a lot of feedback from them? Because you're building a personal yeah. relationship, it's not just yeah. buying a product, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, quite often we'll get really lovely messages after workshops, which is so nice because I put so much, not pressure on it, but I feel so strongly about people just, I don't know, coming in here, leaving the worries at the door. Yeah. And just, I just want to like look after, make everybody their cups of tea and nobody has to worry about anything else. Yeah. And apart from just literally sitting and being in the moment and I don't know, people are so busy, aren't they? And so many yeah. people have got such stressful lives that I think you just need to switch off and sometimes you need to get out of your house to switch off for that. Oh yeah, for sure. Even if it's for two hours on an evening. Who was the, there was an old guy in Blue Ridge that was doing one of the oyster bamboo courses, making the bamboo fly rods, and I was speaking to him and he was very clearly, he's been a highly successful person. I think he was the guy that Shannon and Bill were talking about when we went to visit them recently. They're, he's now moving to Blue Ridge. Yeah. Like, very clearly, like, I would guess millionaire. Like, okay. very high. And he was like, it was his 22nd class or something. And I was talking to him, he was like, I've never felt more fulfilled than when I make a rod. Yeah. So like, he's obviously done major steps in business to mm -hmm. be where he is. And I can't remember for the light. He did introduce me and tell me his name. 
Okay. He's not like a craft guy. He just goes and does these courses. Okay. And he's like, I've never felt more fulfilled than when I make a rod. And it wasn't when I go fishing with a rod that I've made. It was when I've made the rod. When I've actually made it. Yeah. Yeah. There's something to be said for it, like using these, using your hands yeah. again, right? Well, you just don't think about anything else and you're not checking your phone or... I Time know. goes. Yeah. What is it they call it? A flow state? Like you end up in this flow state yeah. where things are just happening. Yeah. So you built a place that people can leave all that at the door. Is that what you think you needed when you started all this? Yeah. yeah. You basically built what you wanted and yeah. what you needed yeah. to exist in the world. Well, years ago I just thought, like, I'm not a person that's huge on quotes and I don't have them all over my house or anything. Yeah. Yeah. But I saw a quote that was like, find something that makes you happy and use it to make others happy. Oh, so all right. That's it. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> and you have done it. And is... That's your mission statement. Yeah, pretty much. That's kind of... Because I just needed... Like, since being... Is that not what it was? Yeah, that's what Brian's <laughs> jumping. In case we had to do it Since being 17, and I had... I've had times where I've really struggled with my mental health. Yeah. And that's always been what's helped me. Is Crafters. Craft, like art, anything yeah. creative. Like, it's definitely, this has all come from bad places, like, to get myself out of it. And even yeah. just this business, it's when, like, something to focus on as well mm. and something to put all of my thoughts and stuff into. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird one. <laughs> I don't think it's a weird one. I think there'll be a lot of people that it resonates with. Like, it's a really beautiful thing to come from not necessarily a very beautiful place to mm -hmm. be. Yeah, but to create something mm. beautiful from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, like, yeah, I just know how much it has helped me and how, well, every, like, so many people say, don't they, that, and there's so many benefits of craft. It's literally, the NHS have said about how beneficial really? it can be on your mental health and, yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely like, has been on me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If like if everything just feels like too much or I'm too overwhelmed or I don't know if I'm just sad or yeah. anything, then if I just start working on a big piece or not necessarily an order, but something that I just want to make. Right. Which is important too, yeah. isn't it? Um then I just don't think about anything else and it just really helps me to just sort of slow my mind because I'm such an overthinker as well, but it just makes me slow my mind down mm. um, and calm me down a little bit. Um, yeah. Do you make much time to make the things that you want to make? Um, e yes and no. So like at the moment, obviously we're nearly at Christmas, so everything's so busy that I feel like I've not made anything for myself for ages. Yeah. Um, but then throughout the year I probably do because most of the things in here are things that I've just made when I've wanted to make them and then mm. they're on sale and then if anybody wants to buy them great but I've kind of made them because I wanted to make them yeah. yeah um and then things like the aprons and all my new textile stuff was because I can't even remember but I was I was having a really rubbish week so I was I was really I know I was poorly so I just stayed in bed all day but I felt really guilty for not going to work and for just staying in bed yeah so I was like right I'll I'll draw because I've drawn on my iPad and that's when I drew the pattern that's on that bag and the apron right and I'd just done it as a drawing a bit of a doodle whilst I was in bed so at least I felt like I was working a little bit and now it's on phone cases bags aprons wrapping paper so it's like I did that just for the fun of it, but yeah. then it does actually come into work eventually. Yeah. So yeah. I do make things that I want to make, but I will then. So it's like a hobby that also benefits work as well. Work, yeah. I think it's a lifestyle. I think yeah. doing anything to, to I don't want to use the word to successful standard because I've not got that great a relationship with the word success, but. I think to do anything that works, like it just has to be everything. Mm -hmm. It is all encompassing, isn't it? So before we go into talking about all the other stuff you're doing, we've talked about your workshops, but what is it you actually do? Like <laughs> mosaic tiles. Explain that to the people listening. What is it I do with mosaic? 
Oh, what do I do as a like, job? What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you even do every day? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that like family member that just doesn't quite get it. Question. Yeah. So right? what do you do? Yeah, but your your mosaic tiles like it's very you. They're very mm-hmm. recognisable as you. Yeah, have you Big had to see it online? Is that Anna who did that? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I taught myself um, with kind of what I could find available. Yep. Um, and then just started to experiment with different types of tile, found, and didn't, I didn't follow any book. So I wasn't like learning from somebody else's style or influenced by any one particular person. It was more, (laughs) it was more, so through school and college and everything, I really just loved surface pattern. Right. Um, and did quite a bit of textiles and I really always liked drawing and doodling and stuff so my work kind of came from that rather than being inspired by mosaic it was more inspired by surface pattern designers or I don't know like not traditional mosaics basically so then and because I was self-taught and literally just figuring out like my first ones are dreadful um but yeah just Nobody needed to see them. I was just doing it for me, so I could I had the time to experiment and develop my own style because I knew I wanted to do something different. Yeah, because when you think mosaic tile, you think like like me and Jake talked about this last night. Like you think like the old Greek stuff or mm-hmm. the I know Tunisia Super has intricate, got yeah. Roman, yeah, but they're all very pattern based. Yours aren't. Yours are like art based, right? I mean, there's I there's a pattern my, element in it. I think it. mine are just more simplistic. Yeah, I do you think, think they're more simplistic. Yeah. Like. Bigger, bolder shapes, yeah, much that, like yeah. more minimal, more simplistic, which I think is my design preference as well. Mm. I prefer more simplistic, minimal designs sometimes. Um, and the colours are obviously a lot more muted yes. than some traditional mosaics. Um, so yeah, it just came from experimentation really. And then obviously you can apply that to all different things. All so different the panels things, yeah, or yeah. bunting or... Whatever it might be, um, yeah. And then, so you've opened your shop. Mm-hmm. You're now making stuff to sell in the shop, and the kits to sell in the shop. Mm-hmm. Online. On online, sorry, yeah, on the online store. But then this whole like world of like, hey Brian, you're really cool. Can you come and make us loads of stuff? <laughs> and you started like all these, these things approached you. What were all those things? You know, you alluded to it earlier. There was like phone cases, mm-hmm. wallpaper. You started doing your own, um, the cross back pennies mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, that's a whole other journey. <laughs> yeah, that's my brain. Just like, oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do this. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, yeah, so started with all the mosaic stuff um, and had and when I had this shop as a physical shop that people could come into and they still can, but it's like, oh that's not for sale. Oh sorry, that's not for sale. So mm. I don't advertise myself as a shop. I am a studio and workshop space. But right. if people wanted to just wander in, obviously they're very welcome yeah. to. Um and then I don't know, it's just something I always wanted to do was to do a range of like product based things so the bags and the aprons and all of that but until I had the shop I didn't really I couldn't justify doing it and didn't know how to even start but then bought an iPad Pro so I could start digitally designing Mm. things which kind of then and that was one of them things that you're like oh it's a lot of money can I justify buying one I went into the shop so many times and bottled it walked straight back out I was like can't afford like at this point, I couldn't afford to just go in and buy an iPad. Yeah. We'd done that with our Macs for like two years. Yeah. And then finally just bit the bullet. And then like, can you even imagine not having, having it now? Even this road trip alone. Like yeah. I've edited all the vlogs on the road. Like yeah. you'd be, like even just battery life and stuff. Yeah. Like I'd looked so long at like what's the cheaper alternative that I can maybe get by with. Yeah, but then... It's... And then you're like, I'm going to... St- and I had I'd spent money on laptops and you're like we're kind of getting by but it's not efficient like you just need to take the plunge yeah so yeah and then since doing that that then meant that I could start designing products a bit more Um, and then I think the more 
my audience grew and the more people I could reach, the more I could justify launching yes. new products. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like the, the comp- case me, the phone case company asked me if I'd design a range for them and so like or everything else has just been me yeah. being like, so I, my first video that like went viral, I was wearing a cross back apron. Right. And so many people said to me, I love your apron, where did you get it from? So I was like, right, well, if I just design an apron, I can say, you can buy it here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is my apron. Um, so that was like two years ago and I've only just launched them, but I but got there the eventually. Bible, <laughs> yeah. Time. Um, so yeah, just slowly starting to build up the products and the things that I... I basically make things that I like and yeah. that I that, that's want. What, that's why people like, want them. It's yeah, serious. I've always had an obsession with wrapping paper. I've got a drawer full of just nice wrapping paper that I think, actually, I don't like anyone enough to give you this wrapping paper on your present. <laughs> <laughs> so I end up just we'll keeping it. We'll find out if we get a good Christmas card wrapped or a good Christmas yeah. present wrapped yeah, one you'll day. you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, now, and it's just diversified what I've got as well and what I can offer now and different price points as well because yeah. price get, points are important yeah for people who can't afford maybe a mosaic but they can yeah. afford an apron or a bag or something they still are supporting your or they and can't I think, get to a workshop or they can't you know there's yeah or they think what well, I don't know what like I like it but I don't know what I'd do with it whereas most people want a phone case or yeah. need an apron or whatever so yeah no it's been it's been exciting like getting printed things like that is so exciting Oh yeah, I absolutely love it. It's like in your hand and you can wear it. And, yeah, you know. yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's, it's like a proper product. Yeah. Especially when it's been digital. Like we feel fine the same when we when we I'll, I'll redact that statement when you're designing the magazine. Like you get the design back from Tyrone and you and mm-hmm. him and the editor go through it and it's like, but it's always on screen. Mm-hmm. And then you get the first copy and it's like, oh, yeah, it's a bit of nice this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. You mentioned there the reach. How important has that reach been for all of this? And how did that even come about? Very important. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, well, loads of followers don't mean more sales. But for me, it has. Yeah. Um, and it came about because I... <laughs> you're laughing because you know what it came about. <laughs> I so want to cut this video in. <laughs> so, insert video here. <laughs> um... It's so funny. So for so we'd gone into the third wave of everything shut down for COVID. Yeah, right. So I was in here and was making panels again just for to keep myself sane, basically. Yeah. And reels on Instagram had just become a thing, and then you're like, oh god, something else that we need to think about and do get on that trend. Um. So I started to film just on my on my iPhone, um, like you know when you you've not got a tripod, so you use like blue tack and yeah, yeah. anything, anything you can your, prop it yes. up on. <laughs> so I did that a few times and filmed a few little videos, and then Jake said that well, my sister had been saying you need to get on TikTok, and I was like I'm not going to do TikTok because at that point the perception was that TikTok is just. It if you want to learn a dance, yeah. like through <laughs> through COVID, my dad was learning TikTok dances, <laughs> and every week he'd send us one. Oh, that's so um, oh your dad's going to be like, get that cut. He'd <laughs> <laughs> no, be like, put the video in. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> People want to see me. Yeah. Um, so I, I was like, no, I'm not going to do TikTok. But then. Jake, who obviously I took more seriously than my sister, said, no, actually, people are starting to use it. Like, there was the thing of learn on TikTok and um, more creative started to use it as a mm-hmm. more of a serious platform. Um, and I thought, right, well, I can just repurpose the videos I've already Maybe. done for Instagram, mm-hmm. stick them on TikTok. But I didn't know what I was doing, so I... Needed to, I tried to practice. <laughs> I had no followers and I made an account and like the camera came on and it put a weird filter on my face of oh. me with a big swollen face and a beard. <laughs> and a funny voice and I accidentally posted it. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, I need to delete that. Um, What's worth saying here is loads of people mm-hmm. intentionally do 
Do silly you? things like that to yeah. get internet clout. Yeah. And yours is hilarious. <laughs> yours is so funny. <laughs> um, oh dear. It was just the fact, I literally had no idea. You know when you just, buttons happen and you're like, oh God, I don't know what's happening. I didn't happening. know how TikTok worked either. I was just like, well, this happened far too fast. I didn't even yeah. know where, where it just kind of disappeared. I was like, where did it go? It just reminded me of like getting on a Zoom call with, our, with my gran over COVID and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's exactly that and yeah. it, was, it was hilarious it was so good so anyway sorry <laughs> it is the best thing ever <laughs> and I hope she reposts it it is one of the best things I've seen on the internet thanks maybe I'll just go to doing that instead <laughs> while I'm away I've got no videos to post <laughs> <laughs> to that. Um, so no then I thought right try again mm -hmm. upload one of the videos I've done and it was like a start to finish time lapse um, making a panel and I had no followers nobody followed like I didn't follow anybody and it, I didn't realize that TikTok even if you didn't follow people you still could see anybody's video mm. like the explore pages like the main page isn't it I only found out that last night but yeah. you, you told us that last night <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> such a go <gory. laughs> um, so yeah posted the video thinking no one would see it, it was just a bit of a practice run. And then the next day woke up to 20,000 followers. But you it, were like, let's see how famous I am. Yeah, literally yeah. I woke up like, let's see how well my video's done. Am I a TikTok sensation? Yeah. Like joking. And then I was like, oh my God. <laughs> um, and then the next day, I think it had like nearly half a million views. And then I posted another one. So at that point it wasn't connected to Instagram or yeah. anything so there was no website link to it it was just a video yeah. that was just there and it was so, just one right there was no just like, one. back catalog no, just it was one. one video it? yeah uh, um i'd love to know like, so he posted the second part of the video which was the grouting mm -hmm. and everyone loves a grout video <laughs> so satisfying <right? laughs> yeah um and that did the same but at that point i'd obviously managed to link my instagram in the bio so everybody who followed on TikTok and liked that video came over to Instagram. Mm. I got 20,000 Instagram followers in a week. It was it was crazy. Um, but how, do you, how did you feel at that, that time? Oh. Like, <laughs> Jake was, your... was like, Brownie, do you know your website's down? I was like, I've turned it off. It's all too much. <laughs> <laughs> no way, like, did you? Brownie, more people than ever are going on your website why have you turned it off, you absolute idiot? And I was like, it's too much. I'm deleting Instagram, I'm deleting TikTok. <laughs> That's, it was overwhelming. Oh my God. Like, I'm chasing a successful business. So, it looks like it's about to be successful, so I'm quitting. Yeah. That's it. I'm That's done. done. I'm out. <laughs> um, just so many messages from people asking for stuff. Like so many wow. people wanted to buy that panel in that video. Um, I got people from all over the world messaging to say, can I have, I, I, it was crazy. Like, I don't think I slept from the adrenaline and. Oh, I, I definitely wouldn't be sleeping for a week. No, it was a mad time. But then I don't know what happened then because then an Instagram video went mad and then a Facebook. So again, I posted just the same video onto Facebook. Mm. And then I think that video ended up with like 30 million wow. views because of how many times it got shared by huge accounts, mm. like thousands and thousands and thousands of comments. Um, but obviously at that point, I tried to make sure everybody was directed to Instagram. Mm. So my Instagram following just grew so quickly. And it like, it has dropped as well. Oh, really? It's worth saying... They don't all stay. No. <laughs> um, there was a big thing Instagram was doing for a while though where it was killing yeah. dead accounts, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, I told myself that. It wasn't because people didn't like me yeah. anymore. <laughs> if anyone's listening to this and was like, that never happened, it did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then it kind of just carried on growing. Um, but that meant that the audience was bigger and because people were seeing me making stuff, people wanted to have a go at that themselves mm. um, so more people wanted a kit and more people wanted a door number um, door numbers were cool. <laughs> um, but then it was just so many people just asking for, for stuff like I, that I couldn't fulfill and then I feel really guilty if I can't but you're only one please person. everyone 
that so that is the main thing that people just didn't realize as well they've just followed this account yeah that by that point it's got quite a few followers yeah and then i got a review on facebook someone just publicly put a review saying i wouldn't even respect a response from this company and i was like i'm not a company i'm just one person i can't reply literally at that point i couldn't reply to every single message yeah, of course. i was doing like q and a's on instagram to try and catch all of the like, like frequently asked, yeah yeah um and i was like i'm so sorry i can't reply to everyone but this is kind of the general things i'm being asked so but yeah, when she said that, I was like, people aren't seeing this as one person just mm. who three days ago was just putting about Post in the pyjamas. <laughs> Post a picture of a swollen face and a beard on yeah. TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it, 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 completely, it's, yeah, it, it completely changed my whole life, my whole business. It made it so full, exciting. full time. Yeah. It's made the, the opportunities that, that then came from brands so started doing like some content creation or like influencer type work for brands. Like and that big would brands be, too, like yeah. Dell and stuff like that. Like yeah. big brands. When that first came, I was like, "Is this a joke? Is this a scam?" Was, yeah, definitely it's a scam. spam. Yeah. Um, but no. Like I've worked with Top Styles, did an advert for them, mm -hmm. um, and then just some other companies as well, like Saltwater Sandals, who I've always worn their sandals and always yeah. loved them, and people always said to me where'd you get your sandals from? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I should be an ambassador for them. And then it happened a couple of years ago when I got paid to do an advert for them. So it's just crazy, but amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I feel very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Self-made luck. Yeah. Self-made luck, yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> like there was an element of luck yeah. in, that vid in that video, if when, in that happening, because... I guess we don't know how The thing happens. with, I think this... People always say, like, why do you think that happened with that video? And I think it's because nobody else was doing it. Mm. If you if you look at a mosaic hashtag on TikTok, there's not a lot of people yeah. doing it. And obviously it likes something different. Yeah. So now if I post a video, it doesn't always do quite as well because I've kind of spammed it myself right. a little bit. I don't know. Um, but because I was doing something quite different to everybody else and even different mosaic type to other people... And then making quite it catch people's attention. Yeah, yeah. And quite a satisfying video of like a piece fitting in perfectly. Yeah, and then the people will be like, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I go down that rabbit yeah. hole. Like, especially with like it's guys that machine tolerances on pins and holes that you can hear the suction as it mm -hmm. goes in. It's or when, it pops back out, I'm like, oh. It's when two bits, <laughs> nah, for me, it's when two bits of wood just like, you wouldn't even see the seam or, or like. Yeah. yeah, it goes yeah. together and you're like, yeah. oh. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's or what whales. catches people to. Or whales. Or whales. Whales. Yeah. <laughs> you said something really important there though, because a lot of people would look at these big accounts and think like, I can do that. I'm going to start doing that. And I think there's a few crafts that suffer from that because the materials are easy to get or the, the X, Y, Z. It's, it, you think it's easy to put together. But the reason that yours won't be successful is because there's loads of other things out there. Whereas the reason yours is successful is there wasn't... You were just doing what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And that was the success in it. Like if someone else comes along now and tries to do exactly the same, they're still going to be the second version of you. Yeah, which I kind of have to remind myself when I get wound up about certain things. But... You're the OG. Yeah. But that is frustrating because you've had that happen quite a few times, haven't you? I've seen it on your stories. and Yeah. Which, like, it's a funny one because in no way am I saying I invented those eight and no one else can do it. But, but when style. it's literally tile for tile, the exact same thing. Yeah. The exact same tiles, the exact, literally a yellow flower there. Like, I know that it's completely copied. That has been... Hard because the whole thing I wanted to do was to do something completely different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, and I've got no issue. Like, and then I got a comment once, like a message saying, It's weird that you're complaining about people copying when you do kits and you do workshops. And I'm like, I'm so happy for people to come in here to a workshop and I will help you copy a piece tile for tile, yeah. but don't sell it as your own design. Don't, yeah, you're not, you're not annoyed about the copying. You're annoyed no. about people selling it as selling their own Selling it thing. as their own. Yeah. That is, that is my only issue. If property. people want to do it, if people want to copy everything and gift it to their family for Christmas or post a picture of it, absolutely fine. But when people are setting up shops, like with my designs as theirs, then... 
do you approach people about it or do you, how do you um, go around that situation? I did once because it was like the f there was two at the same time that cropped up um, and it just I didn't I wasn't rude I just said kind of just explained that how hurtful yeah. it is pretty much and one of them was so apologetic admitted it like just didn't I, didn't, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt that yeah, they don't realise kind of that actually that's somebody's years and years and years of experimentation and hard work that you're just shortcutting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then someone else just carried on, so I kind of just ignored it after that. And it's nice because so many people will send me accounts to be like, so people recognise it, but then when you kind of try and ignore it and then people send it you. Yeah, you're like, right. I know, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, but then I really appreciate yeah. it at the same time. Yeah. I know. yeah, you don't know which one you'd rather. Would yeah. you rather just be blind to it or would you rather... Like, it's really cool that you've got fans, because it's obviously the algorithm's popping up on their feed yeah. because it knows what yeah. they like, and they're like, ah, this ain't the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then there's also on the other thing, I know people have taken pictures of my door numbers to people doing it and been like, can you make this? Because my waiting list's short. Like, I'm not taking any more orders. So people will just go somewhere else, which... It's just one of them things, isn't it? And I know, I know quite a lot of people in this space have suffered with... The exact same thing yeah. and it's just always that is the downside of social media yeah. you're putting your work out there to thousands of people pinterest like once it goes into pinterest then it's there for everybody to kind of use as inspiration isn't it yeah yeah but at the same time you couldn't market your work without putting it taking a picture and posting it so exactly I know. but do you think there's, there's more... something sorry on you no go on do you think there's something to be said like an extra barrier of protection because people know you because like, I always view these things as people are buying from you. Mm -hmm. like, I could go and see another one of them and be like, all right, it's cool, but like, I want yeah. Brianies. Because you're you're very forward-facing on your Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you maybe wouldn't have been at the time. And I wonder what at what point you became forward-facing and at what point... Because I know that original reel was just your hands, wasn't it? Yeah. So at what point did you start doing that? And was that a conscious decision? I've always done it a little bit. I've like I've, People have always known what I look like and yeah. who I am. Um, and also, because I do workshops, it's not like I'm like a mystery yeah. person making anyway. You know, like some people you'll never really see yeah. who they actually are. Which is a shame. Yeah. Um, so, no, I've always tried to be quite open and put myself out there. Like there's things that I don't share that much on social media or didn't used to and maybe do so more now um but yeah I think it's nice if people feel like they do know you a little bit yeah. or it's nice when people come to workshops and they kind of know what you've been up to and it's a good starting point to like get chatting to people um and it also just makes I think sometimes makes people feel a bit more comfortable them opening up when they come or I don't know I've just always yeah I've never it was never a conscious decision to right just natural. Here's my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but didn't really ever do the chatty stories that much, just because I couldn't. Yeah. It's just quite daunting, isn't it, to yes. do it? And yes. But now I think as I've got older, I've cared less more, like mm. cared less about that. Now I'll just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something we're getting older? Or is that something we're getting more notoriety in your space? Older. <laughs> um, because actually if you think oh god I'm talking to that many people if you put that many people actually in front of you to talk yeah. you wouldn't want to do it or I wouldn't want to do it yeah I find that really interesting when people talk about like account sizes and followers as well because like, we're just over 31,000 you're what 220 plus thousand. 202 was 203 <laughs> <laughs> and you're like <laughs> <laughs> so, but you think about that in terms of I always think about it in terms of Murrayfield Stadium, mm -hmm. like because you'd be like, oh, we want we want a bigger account, we want to push it because ultimately the, the more we push out, the more makers we can provide a platform mm -hmm. for. That is the whole mission. But I'm like, that would be like me standing in the middle of Murrayfield Stadium and looking at half of the whole yeah. stadium filled. That's fucking bonkers. Yeah, imagine. but you don't think about it in those numbers of. You look at some accounts with like a million and stuff like that, yeah. and it's we're so detached from those numbers. Yeah. Which, yeah. But then now I just kind of think, this is 
who I am. Mm-hmm. And this is me. Stay if you like my stuff. <laughs> and if you don't, yeah. bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. So what's coming up? You've got travel. Yeah. Right, you've got mad travel, mm-hmm. which is a massive part of your life traveling, isn't it? More so recently. It wasn't for a long time. I wanted it to be, but it wasn't realistic. Yeah. And for quite a long time, kind of didn't have that as a possibility for right. a few reasons. But yeah, now it definitely, definitely is. Yeah. And work related as well, not just pleasure. Yeah, because you don't do, you talk about the work related part and then we'll get on to the fun part. Um, you don't just do studios here now, do you? You've been invited to like a load of retreats, a load of hotels, like you're getting invited to do, to take your workshops, your mindful workshops, your craft to other places. Mm-hmm. That must be like a huge recognition. Whether you view it as success or not, it's recognition. Yeah, and like, before, so before I had this space, I was travelling around to do workshops because I didn't have a space that people could come to. Um, but it's hard work doing the travelling ones because, like, if it's here, people just come, everything's Here and you don't have to out. take too much. Yeah. Um, whereas, obviously, if you go somewhere, you've got to pack it all up and set the... Because I always wanted the room to be... A representation yeah, of how... Not just, so yeah, not like, yeah, just... So, like, there was one room, and I didn't like the mugs, so I'd take all nice mugs with me. Really? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> because it's, like, those same. little details. It's the whole experience, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, so now, like, I've been doing them here again, and we'll continue to do them here, but also looking to start travelling again. And again, it's kind of come with that audience growing means it's not just local people anymore so my workshops used to be all local people who heard of you from word of mouth or mm. they came into a venue had a, who had a poster on the back of the toilet type thing um whereas now i get people coming here from scotland london like traveling hours and booking accommodation for the weekend i've had people come from america just to come to a workshop wow it's really crazy. yeah um yeah, that was crazy. Or people who'll come be coming to Scotland from yeah. America, who'll be like, "Oh, we'll just nip <laughs> down to you." I'm like, it's five hour drive. <laughs> a long but way. yeah, they just don't think anything. But to be it. fair, five hours in America, they're like, yeah, yes. it's just an exit. So it's so it's so nice because now there is that scope to kind of travel Girl. a bit more. So the ones that I've done in Wiltshire, the people who live down south, who it might take them six hours to get here, it'll only take them two hours to get to that one. Um, and it's just nice to be able to pick different, like beautiful venues as well, because I want it's it to be the full experience. Just, yeah. Yeah, that, that's exciting. So excited for you. Yeah. I'm so excited to, at the prospect of being able to combine the travel element, but also f- yeah. to give people that experience of coming traveling with us for workshops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's something we've spoke about a lot, but like this year, just time just go so you think oh I'll do that in December and then it's time, December but yeah. Just yeah. Um, but no hopefully next year like Jake's on board with doing it and then Jake's mum is a chef so we'd have a private chef um, oh so you go like full hog retreat oh yeah yeah good yeah yeah so that's cool the, the thing I really would love to do because when you when people come to workshops you get chatting and everyone's got the same interests as me like everybody not not everybody but so many people they love anything creative and like trying all different creative things they love the outdoors they love walking they love food they love coffee they love wine <laughs> so i'm like well, good well, this kind of yeah. a retreat waiting to happen you're like i'm an expert in all of these <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i can drink wine yeah. <laughs> um so yeah so when you go travelling, are you going to keep your eyes out for places to do more of these? Yeah, I think so. Maybe not this time round, like no, we talked not this about. Time. But... Go to Australia. Well, this, this, is an, this is a holiday. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what I need. I need to have a bit of a break. Like, you, you guys will know it's all encompassing. You think about it 24-7. Mm-hmm. Your brain doesn't switch off. Even when you're supposed to be having time off, you're still thinking about it. And the ang- like, my constant anxiety of have I not done something and I think because I'm always so busy I always just feel a bit like I'm failing because something's not been done yeah so rather mm. than being able to appreciate what I've done I think I think about the things I've not done yet 
Um, that's very common. Yeah. It's not just you, that's like we do that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's exhausting, isn't it? It's so exhausting. It takes so much energy. Yeah. It takes it out of you, doesn't it? Like, why can't I just appreciate what we've just done and achieved yeah. rather than instead of just being on to the next thing that you're behind because oh, you've been focusing on that yeah. last thing. I don't know what the answer is. Well, the best the answer is to celebrate it properly. The best thing you ever done is once we published that documentary and put it out to the world, you booked the Scotsman Cinema for like thirty people. It was a very small cinema, and we all went and watched it together. Oh, that's so. And cool. that was like a mark in time. Like this project is now finished. Yeah. It's ready to go out to the world. Yeah, that's true. Like that. So just that level of celebration every single time. Yeah. I was just at the back going. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can't do that level of celebration every time we like do the VAT return or something yeah. like that, right? But we can. Oh, get I feel some... like that deserves <laughs> that, that level deserves of celebration. That deserves, right? that deserves yeah. some wine. That's for yeah. sure. But, but grease for a week or something like that. Vat return burn. See ya. Yeah. But I think you do need to celebrate it. It is important. So well, it's important. just like, not, not even necessarily celebrating, but just recognising those little wins. Hmm. Or it doesn't always have to be big ones, does it? No. No, and there's so many little ones, isn't there? But you just kind of don't get a chance to think about them that much. Um, so, yeah, I think I need I need a bit of a, a break. Yeah. Reset myself, because... It's been a slog to get to this point. Like, more, like people don't see all the stuff that kind of goes on behind the scenes. And no, 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 nobody gets that. You can't share all of it. Well, the, the stuff that was happening years ago, that's kind of set me up for this point. Yeah. Like, I've not really ever spoken about everything that much. I've never really had the platform to speak about yeah. it all. Um, but yeah, oh, so many years of planning and sacrifice before you actually get to the point that people see yeah they just think it happened yeah like, overnight yeah. overnight success 25 <laughs> year overnight success that's what bill and shannon always tell themselves 25 year overnight success like, <laughs> like, success like, is only what do you call yourself that night like a five year overnight success no um a magazine i think the headline they did an interview with me and they called me an overnight sensation but it was to be fair it's because the tick like the video went mad overnight but it's still a shit headline. <laughs> like, I get it, but it's still a crap headline. Well, yeah. yeah, I'm not a big fan of that overnight success because there is so much that goes into it. Yeah. You know, whether whether it's someone listening to this that's like, you know, chipping away at that while they're working full time to yeah. make it a thing later or whether it's someone that's struggling through it full time to make it work later. Yeah. Like, there's so much that goes into it. That's it. And I think it's if you say it's overnight, you're not giving people a fair like idea of what it is actually and then if people aren't yeah, don't do it overnight and they think oh well i'm obviously doing something wrong because it's not happened overnight yeah it's what do you call it it's false say false what's the word I don't know that. you're giving someone a false look into what it actually takes to to do everything yeah. that it requires yeah so you're going out east for three months, which isn't a long time when you think about it, like three months. No, when you actually think about how big countries are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we didn't realise that. Yeah. 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 Um, and have you got stuff booked when you come back? So I've just booked in a hen party for April. Nice. Running a hen party, not going on a hen party. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so I've done that and then I just need to start organising some workshops. And then I've got a couple of projects that I'm working on next year, which are a bit secret at the moment. Um, Come on, <laughs> so things that I'm working on yeah. next year and that I'll be able to work on a little bit whilst we're away. Right. Um, but then I'll be pretty much straight back. I think I'll be ready to come back and I think get so. back into it. I'll, yeah. I will miss it whilst we're away because I am a bit obsessed with it. And I just love it. That's so cool, yeah. the way. It was very clear it. from the minute we met you last night and obviously you and Jake were great to have us over last night and stay last night. Like, it was very clear that you absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. You're just like a little ball of energy about <laughs> it, aren't you? It's hilarious. It's so good. Yeah. yeah, well, ask me again in a week and I'll be like, oh, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we just got you on a good day. <laughs> yeah. And that's normal, by the way. It's totally normal. But it gets you through the hard days just knowing that this is that I love it so much. I do, yeah. yeah. I, wouldn't, I would not change it for the world. That's like, so good. At all. I can't imagine doing anything else. But then also the fear of what if I have to do something else at some point. But then you just change and you adapt. That fear can be motivating as well. Well, that's what you you did. You didn't know what you were going to do. Yeah. And then you, you, you came up with this idea and looks where it's gone. So you'll always have that outlook, I think, of what's next. 
what can I do instead? But yeah, because it's I think that's the the fear is like with going away for so long. Well, you say it's not so long, but to me it's so long because I've never had that length it is, of break. It's still a long time, but in the grand scheme of things, yeah, it's not yeah. so long. But to me, a two week holiday, I'm like right, well. Everyone's going to forget about me by the time I get back. I'm going to have to think of something else to do, <laughs> which obviously... It's not going to be the case. But that, the idea of having three months away is a bit scary. I could see that. Um, I could see that. But I think because there is things I'll still be able to do. And yeah. I will You're hopefully... still working towards that goal. Yeah. yeah. And I'm hopefully going to be able to do like creative things whilst we're on the road. Yeah. And, then, and I'm sure it'll just inspire... Something. Something new as well. I'll come back with a hundred yeah, ideas, ideas. <laughs> and so then be exhausted add and need to holiday. the other hundred ideas that you have. Yeah. 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 And then be really obsessed with them and then forget about them three days later. Yeah, but it's funny, it's... isn't it? Because you, you give yourself a hard time about that, I feel, because you're like, oh, it took two years to do the aprons or I've got all these ideas and I forget. But you've got through a lot. Yeah. Like from workshops and courses to you do a lot of stuff to sell to your own designs on your your clothing range, you've got your aprons, you've got, like, the domestic, of course, you've mm-hmm. got, you do a lot. I, th- I think some, like, this, p- a lot of the elements could be full-time work. Oh, Easily. Yeah. So, I feel like I've got three full-time jobs. Do you think you'd ever get someone else in to help with that? I knew you'd ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> People always ask me that. Um, yeah. But, I don't think it's as easy for me as just getting somebody. Um, I've got a lovely lady, Ren, who has helped me pack kits recently. So if I've just got loads to do, she'll come and just help me pack boxes. And she's got a small business, so she just... Ren and Thread. Um, so she just knows what she's doing, basically. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's got to be the right person, hasn't it? And it does the right have to thing. be the right person. There's so many things that I feel... Like, I've always thought, no, I'm the only one who can do it. When I'm not, at no. all. I don't need to measure grout. And I don't need to, I don't know. You don't need to be emailing. Take boxes. Yeah, and emailing the clothing suppliers. and no. emailing. So, I think, and it just free my time up for the things that actually I, I am the only one that could do. The actual mosaics and the workshops. So, people have said, would you get someone else to run? workshops or would you fran- like I've been asked if I'd franchise like workshop spaces I'm like no, no. yeah that, that, no. that'd be a step you, too far you said me. you said last yeah. night like um you know what, how big do you actually want to get yeah that is the yeah. thing like that's the question do you really want to no. to do that I I've never I didn't do this for the money I've never I never started this because like, well you wouldn't start something like this yeah. <laughs> if you were in it for the money um say about print all the time i would do commercial waste or something like, yeah it's boring businesses that make a lot of money like we <laughs> like, do things because we're creative I'm, so I, the, the thing that i always said when people used to say what do you want to do when you're older yeah it's like i just want to do something that i love and i want to do something that makes me happy and that i don't when i get wake up in the morning i don't dread going to work yeah that was always my biggest thing was that i just wanted to do something nice and I wanted a comfortable like life, but not. Yeah. I'm not bothered about. about. Yeah. Um, what was the question? What were we talking about? We're actually oh, talking about bringing someone to grow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, bringing someone on and taking. To, so. So yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not. I don't want to grow to the point where it becomes. I'm so far removed from it, and I think at this point now, I'm getting to the point where I'm happy with. Must like the. I don't know, you can ask me on a different day and I'd be like, right, yeah. <laughs> this is the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then other days, I'm like, I just want to make pretty things. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. There's a really good concept for that. I've just pulled it up here, the Eisenhower Matrix. And Nobody's wanting to, your newsletter, nobody wants to hear about that, do they? And, but it's really important. I know, I know, so I'm going to do it now. I'm taking my chance. Okay, my yeah, go on. Yeah. So the Eisenhower Matrix, it's, and you talk about like, there's certain things that you couldn't have people do, but there's certain things you can have people do it. So it's a grid split up into urgent, not urgent at the top, mm-hmm. and not important, important at the side. So you, that's your X, Y. If it's urgent and important, do it. If it's not urgent and important, schedule time to do it. 
if it's urgent and not important, delegate it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And if it's not urgent and not important, delete it. Bin it off. Yeah. Can you and, print and me we, that out? Yeah, I'll send you. <laughs> put it on our t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Right, we can make jumpers and we're going to yeah. put it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Not it. important. Not <laughs> important. <laughs> but I, I talk about it a lot with my friends. I've got businesses as well and, and we run a lot of our stuff through that. And, and my engineering company, when I had guys working for me, like, like, what's the stuff that needs to be delegated? Like, what's the... And you can replace, certainly in the craft space, you can replace important for, like, your core competency. Mm-hmm. What's what's unique to you? Not necessarily what's important, well, that is still important, but because anything else can be... Like, taxis are important, yeah. but taxis are not important to you. But they're important. Well, they are, they're but... important to you, but they're not important for your skill set. There is other I got an accountant this year. Did yeah. you? Yeah. They're so good. <laughs> the full awesome. bookkeeper, the whole lot, send the receipts and they do it all. Um... I don't know, don't ask me too many questions about that because I don't know the answers to most of it. <laughs> Shouldn't have brought that up. <laughs> um, but no, she's already done it. So that's, I think that's the reason I usually hate January. Because yeah, it's like yeah. the 30th of January and like, fuck. Yeah. No, get I must say our account's pretty good because he tries to do it earlier in the year. Yeah. Like yeah. as soon as our year Keep finishes. Keep on top August. of it. So. What's the end goal? What would you, so you talked about like you're, you're obviously comfortable with, you, you're not here to franchise this out, you're not, but you're obviously very passionate about the retreats. You've got a group of people with like chef, Jake's mum's chef, Jake being great, video, photo, mm-hmm. like. End goal, like, I don't know. That's cool the way. Yeah, that's I really think cool not, not to know. I'm, yeah. I'm quite happy, I'll say it. I'd like to know what it is. Yeah. Like if I could see forward and just know that whatever it is, it's like it all works out type thing. But at the same time, I quite like how it shape. Like I like the difference and how different each day is, and yeah, just seeing what happens really. Um, is it hard to know what the end goal is based on how much it's changed in the past I think so. year or two? And I guess, like I'm thirty one. There's quite a lot of years that. I've still got to work. I'm going to have to, and probably work until the day I die. Yeah. Um, the world could be a totally different place. Yeah, exactly. Well like, you we could have another that. pandemic or, yeah. I don't know, like my hands might just completely stop working, which yeah. they feel like they are going to this week. Um, I don't, <laughs> next door. Um, anything could happen. And I think, end goal, like, I've always tried to think as well. If we want a family, how does this work mm-hmm. around that? So that's something I always kind of not take into consideration too much, but just yeah, is do. in the you back of my mind. It, yeah. I want to grow to a point, like with the growth thing, grow to a point where I can support that and be able to take time off. Then. Yeah. Um, or maybe at that point, that's the point that somebody else helps me a bit more. Um, yeah. Whilst you kind of take yeah. a step back from it. And that, I think at this, like at this age now, that. I've started to think about that a bit more, but like still in the future, but. I think there'll be a lot of confidence that comes when you come back from a three month trip and see that the customers are still there. The people what are if still, they're not? They will be. What they if will they're be. not? They will be. <laughs> be like, we are makers, can I have a job? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We might not be there by the time I'll, you come back, I don't I'll know. I'll carry your bags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and they'll be there, I'm very sure of that. If not, I'll just republish this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to remind everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, so end goal wise, I don't know. We'll see. We will see. What about now? Where do people find you now? How do they find you? All of our social media, of course. Yeah. Pretty much all oh, of our yeah. social media. Instagram, um, mainly Instagram, to be fair. I've got a newsletter that I need to start sending out more regularly. Um, and then my personal Instagram as well, if you want to come travelling, because I'll be there yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, I want to yeah. come travelling. Um, yeah, mainly that. Hopefully, maybe one day there'll be a YouTube. Do it. But again, okay. that's another huge job, isn't it? Uh, you guys know. Oh, man. Yeah. Like for a three, four minute day. video of us just doing the vlogs, and, and we're not good at it by any stretch of the imagination, but we're like, it was one of our goals to do this year and just never done it. We had stacks of footage for America and just never done it. And it's like, for a three, four minute video, you're two and a half hours editing and yeah. sifting through stuff at night. It's just gargantuan. Yeah. But, 
But that can be Jake's job because he's good with film and yeah. cameras. <laughs> You're like, I want just a YouTube. Just set time aside just every week. just Because like, people maybe upload one a week. Like, yeah, well, that's Sunday it. You've got out. to be so consistent with it, haven't you? Like, to succeed on YouTube, I think you've got to post once a week and everyone yeah, kind of knows. Yeah, I think in some cases, but then a lot of stuff that I watch, I'll look at the date and it was, Evergreen it was like content. years ago it was posted. Yeah, the algorithm seems to be better at finding what you actually want, which is probably why so many people struggle to get subscribers because there's loads of channels that lately, because we are trying to get the subscriber count up, I've been watching a lot of the channels that I normally watch and realising I'm not subscribed to them because yeah. it keeps throwing them up. So you kind of think you're subscribed. It'd be like your yeah, explore page yeah. always showing you the same people. Like algorithm. Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is your chance. Yeah. Um, and I also can't bring myself to do that YouTube thing, like, like and subscribe in the comments yeah. below. Yeah. <laughs> Click the button here, ring the bell. I think I you should. I, on, I, on this I, video, on this please, video. for me. <laughs> I'm making you to do it. <laughs> All of us. <laughs> All of us, yeah. yeah. Oh, right here. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have That's to good. clip that bit out now and just put it everywhere. Yeah, well. Right. Thank you so much. Thank Got you. One last question. Oh. oh, yeah. The good one. What advice would you give your younger self? Oh. Do you know, I listened to your podcast and I knew you were going to ask that and I feel like I really should have prepared. You, you nearly got away with it there. Like, <laughs> yeah. I should have prepared a really super inspirational answer. doesn't have to um, be. Here's the mosaic I made earlier with my... <laughs> 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 that one? <laughs> yeah. I'll show everyone yeah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is it. Um, <laughs> perfectly placed. Oh, that one. Yeah. Do what you love. Um, or maybe not advice. Just tell myself that it all works out. Yeah. I think to, if I could ease twenty-year-old's mind, that you're going to be so happy and love what you do, and start to feel comfortable within yourself, mm. like and. There's a place for you, mm -hmm. kind of, to be who you are. And yeah. Not try to change depending on, I don't know, just be yourself. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Well, I hope, hopefully that wasn't too bad. No. Yeah, you were really nervous about this, weren't you? So, has it been recording? You said it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now can we all Is run that through that? that <laughs> <laughs> right, can we start again? Yeah, no, it's been absolutely great. Well, thank you. Because I remember we were back and forth in DMs and... It's like, I'm so busy, sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry, it's not happening. <laughs> we got in today and she's like, we could actually do all this other stuff instead. I was like, not instead, we could do it as well. Um, so, no, it's good. It's been great. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. To give us this platform. You are most welcome. It will be our mission for as long as we can make it our mission. Yeah. It's exciting though, what you guys are going to do as well. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Next year is going to be... Big. Like you said, we don't really like you. Like we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, like, we don't know where it's going to be. Come that you just you think that would have never happened. Like at the start, I was like, I didn't realize where we are makers could go. Yeah, yeah. and it, like one conversation with one person somewhere yeah. opens a completely new door that you don't even know. Yep, and the inverse of that is like a conversation will happen with someone that you think this is going to be the biggest thing ever. And yeah, it just, it's just yeah. nothing. Yeah, I found that. Yeah. I thought, oh my god, this is going to be it. Yeah, this is it. And Made. then it's like, yeah. <laughs> never mind. Yeah. You're looking at Porsches and Porsche cars. Uh, I've and... already bought it. <laughs> yeah. Take it back oh, the next shit. day. <laughs> yeah. My camper van. Oh, yeah. That's it. I know we're all saying Porsches as if we're remotely interested. We all yeah. just want an old camper van. We just want a camper van. <laughs> <sighs> right, let's wrap it up at that. Yeah. Thanks Thank you so much. much, mate. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thanks for your hospitality last night That's to right. you and Jake. Do you want to make a door number? Yes. Well, <laughs>